Recently, Elementor made big changes to how their layouts are structured by introducing Flexbox containers. Replacing sections and columns, these containers are more flexible, better with responsiveness, and they use less code so they create faster pages. This video is going to be a quick and easy tutorial to introduce you to these containers and show you how to use them. Let's get started. First, let's create a container and look at the differences between it and the old Elementor sections. Right now I have the Flexbox Playground open, which is something Elementor made so we can safely experiment with the Flexbox containers. And I added a link to that in the description so you can play with it also. And I've also have my own website open here that doesn't have containers on it. So how we used to add new sections is we would just click this plus sign here, um, and then we would click this plus icon here, and then we would choose the structure of the section. So we can just go ahead and click this one, which will then give us a section that has two columns. So that's how we used to do it. Now with containers, you add a new container basically the same way. You hover over and click add container here, which looks exactly the same as what you would do with sections. And then you would click the plus icon, also exactly what you would do for sections. But now the structure looks a little different. So let me pop back here and go back here to show you the structure. So these are all columns, you see? But with the containers, we have more options than just columns. That's because these are containers in containers. So we can nest containers in containers, and that's what these options are for here. And then these two options for the containers that don't have any containers in them, they have little arrows and one of them is pointing down and one of them is pointing to the right. So how I think of Flexbox containers is like, imagine if you had a box, right? And you just put a bunch of stuff in the box and it was just randomly all over the box. And then you could tell the box how to organize it. Like you could tell it to organize it with everything going across which would be like a row, or you could organize it with everything going down, which would be a column, which is different from the rows and the columns we used to use because there just wasn't that much flexibility. The structure is much more rigid here. And you have to follow rules, which can sometimes make your life difficult, especially when you're doing responsive sites. The new Elementor containers are great for responsive websites because you have a lot more control over the settings. Like you could say, organize everything in this container going down for a desktop, but then going right for mobile, among many other things. Elementor containers are based on CSS flex boxes, which is why they're called flex box containers. Now, if you wanna look more into the actual CSS code of that, it's gonna help you understand the Elementor containers even more. So if you're interested in that, I have a link to a really good article that goes into the Flexbox CSS, but we're doing quick and easy in this tutorial, so let's just go ahead and get to the container settings. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click this first one for the structure, and there we go, there is our container. So we've got some container settings over here to the right, and you're gonna notice that these look a lot like the section settings. You can put the width as boxed or full width, and you can also change the size of the width if you wanted, and at a minimum height, and both of these are responsive, so you can make changes to these depending on what device it is. And then, like I said, the containers are nestable, so if you wanted to, you can drag a container into the container. Though most of the time, you're just going to be putting widgets in the container. So let's go ahead and throw some things in here. Let's put in an image. Uh, let's see what else. Let's put in maybe a button, maybe a couple more buttons. Let's do two more buttons. And then let's go ahead and throw in an icon also. There you go. Maybe, maybe one more icon. So. Now we have some widgets in the container. So we've got some stuff in the container. So now let's change the settings of the container to affect how the things inside it are positioned. Go ahead and select the container. And the first setting we're gonna talk about is direction. So this is the direction that the items in the container are placed. So you can have them going right, you can have them going down, you can have them going left, and you can have them going up. 
And again, this is something you can do that's responsive. And this is going to be really useful because you're definitely going to come across situations where on some devices you want everything going down and some you want everything reversed to go up. So the next two settings are based on what direction you chose. So if we did a horizontal row, justify content would be how the items are spaced horizontally. But if you picked vertically, justify content would be how things are placed vertically. So for me to show you that, let me just go ahead and delete this image real quick so we can see how things are gonna be spaced a little easier. So we've got things going horizontal, so then we can choose uh, by default, everything's at the start, or they can be centered, or they can all go to the end. You can also do space between, space around, or space evenly, which is really cool because then everything you know is going to be spaced evenly without having to do any pixel math or anything like that. Now, when you change the direction of the container, the content is justified in the new direction. So to show that better, here's a horizontal row and here's everything at the start of it, right? And then when we make this bigger and we switch it to vertical, now everything's going vertical, but it's still at the start of it. So justify content is how everything is spaced out on the direction that you choose. Align items is gonna be how things are spaced out in the opposite of the direction you chose. So right now we have everything going down. So then when we align items to the center, that's gonna affect how things are aligned horizontally. And then of course the opposite is true. If things are going horizontally, then align items aligns the items vertically. Gaps would be how you would change the space in between these items. Like we can go ahead and set this to 100 and then it would space everything out way more. By default, everything will try to fit on one row, but you can set here to wrap it if you need to. So for me to show you how that works, let's go ahead and make the width of this container uh, much, much smaller. And now we can see that everything is smushed, but if we click wrap, then things will move to the next line down. When you choose wrap, you also have an option to align that content, so you can do that here. Now, if you chose not to wrap and you'd see how things overflow out of this container, you can choose what to do with that under additional options under overflow. By default, it overflows out of the container, but you can also choose hidden where it cuts it off. You also have the option here to change the HTML tag of the container, which is super useful because a lot of times your users are gonna expect the whole box to be clickable. And to make that happen, you would have to switch the HTML tag to A. And then you would just put your link here and then your whole box would be clickable with that link. Now let's take a look at some of the new settings that the items in the box have. So let's go ahead and edit this button and then go to advanced. And now you should see here align self, order and size, which are all new. So align self aligns only that item. So now everything is aligned in the center of the container. But if I select this button and then I choose align start, then that one will move to the top. You can also change the order of items, which is really, really useful for responsiveness. I just had an issue with a site I was working on using the old way of sections and columns and I wanted to change the order when the site was put into the mobile version and the only option I had was to reverse the order. So you can do that here by choosing start or end or giving a custom order here. With the size setting here, you can choose if the item is going to grow or shrink. So if we take this width and make it much bigger, you can select one of the items and then say to make it grow to fill up empty space. Or if there's not enough room, we'll go ahead and make this way smaller again. You can select the item and say to make it shrink. And that only works if the elements can shrink, which here these can't, they're already smushed. But if yours can, they will. And that's it. Now you know the basics of how to work with Elementor containers. If I was helpful to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If you're building your own website, make sure to check the description to get your free download of my nine-step roadmap to DIY your first website. It'll guide you through everything you need to do to make and launch your website from start to finish. 
Thank you so much for watching.